Welcome to CBR video 10. Done 10 of these puppies. 10? Already? Ten. Already, we've been doing them for like two years. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, this is like the third one tonight, so <laughs> we've uh, done one third of our quota. Uh, tonight, this time for our 10th tenth, uh, tenth anniversary episode, episodic anniversary of CBR video, we're doing the McKellar Beer Geek Breakfast. This beer is pretty cool. A lot of beer geeks are really looking at this beer. I'm not sure what it's ranked on either of the beer rank sites, but it, it's up there. I mean, very much in the style of, I imagine, very much in the style of... Breakfast Stout? Breakfast Stout. Um, what's the one from Hopping Frog? Uh, Wake and Bake? Uh, uh, that's from Terrapin. Terrapin, I'm sorry. Hopping. They have frog, a frog turtle, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so let's get... Uh, McKellar is a Norwegian brewer. I think... He's a contract brewer that brews at breweries because this beer was produced at Nyagnya. I think I said that pretty accurately. Uh, it's a Norway brewer um, making a pretty big, he's also making a pretty big splash in the uh, United States craft brewing industry. Yeah, we're starting to see more. If you've been following any of the stuff that um, Jim or Greg Cook from Stone has been doing, um, they did a, a collaborative brew with McKellar. And uh, he's also on collaborative brew with. Um, I'm sorry, I forget the guy's name from the Agno. It's like I don't want to wager a guess. It's it's like Chris, I think, but Scandinavianized. <laughs> Crystal? No. So, oatmeal imperial stout with coffee. You're talking about right in my wheelhouse. This is a beer that is engineered for me to love. So we have a very dark beer. I don't see any highlights at all. Big, thick head, head you could float a bottle cap on. The oatmeal, the proteins in the oatmeal tend to lead to a very thick beer, including head retention. A lot of roast in the aroma, a lot of coffee. Yeah, I'm getting coffee. I'm not really smelling much else in the aroma. It's coffee, coffee. It smells like a good coffee. Cheers. I think it could be a little colder. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, we were icing the puppy down, and uh, we got to him too quick, apparently. It's not too hot. It's not horrible, but it's. Um, I think that the, the how can we best explain it, it? It gets a little sour when it's warmer, just just a little bit. Um, the, the tannins from the coffee, I think, right? Kind of just hook in your tongue. Whereas if it was colder, it wouldn't have nearly as much as that. However, there's really some delicious flavors going on here. There's. Um, a lot of, of, I don't think there's any chocolate in this beer, um, but there's a lot of chocolate flavor on the back of my tongue so, right now. So, earlier I said, you know, it smells like coffee. And I, I'm kind of mad at myself for saying it smells like coffee. Because like, coffee has flavors too, and if we were a coffee show, we'd be coming up with all kinds of non-coffee terms to describe what the coffee tastes like. I'm trying to take myself there. Can you come up with anything that says what this coffee tastes like? Um... Uh, there, there's there's a bit of a hickory, um, I think, kind okay. of flavor to it. Uh, a bit of a hickory and uh, maybe mix that with, and I, I never tasted oak, but I've smelled oak. And maybe a little bit of that together too. Okay. So it's kind of woodiness. The hickory uh, definitely makes sense. I can really pick that out. Leaves your tongue pretty dry. It's an interesting contrast because oatmeal stouts typically can be slick or slimy. Mm -hmm. And this one, the coffee, it seems, I don't know if it's coffee, the carbonation, what, but it kind of washes your tongue. It doesn't wash all the flavor off your tongue. You're left with a lot of roast and a lot of coffee, but it washes that oatmeal sliminess off your tongue. And it, it goes from, because it's a little warm, it goes from a little bit sour to big roast and then big coffee, and then it ends on. Sort of a dark bitter chocolate. Okay. And it stays with that bitter chocolate. 
Uh, and since, since you mentioned it twice, I just want to say that there is a little bit of sourness to this beer, but I wouldn't say it's spoiled or it's infected. I'd say it's from the tannins and the yeah. coffee and the grain that is just more of an acrid. Is acrid better than sour, maybe? Perhaps. It's... It, it's 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 a uh, it's a question of degree, I guess, mm -hmm. right? Sure. I mean, we're not talking about sucking on a lemon here. Uh, we're talking about just a slight bit of um, a slight bit of, of of going into that sour direction without going all the way over, if you mm -hmm. will. I picked this up at the Grape and Gourmet in Virginia Beach. Um, it's a great little wine and beer shop. It's it's on Virginia Beach Boulevard. Many miles from the ocean. I'm not sure how far. I didn't actually drive it from the ocean out, but it's pretty far back. Um, I walked in, and you know they were having a wine tasting, and then they had you know their beer wall. They have a little fridge and a lot of room temperature beer, but the building was kept kind of cool, so it was in good shape. And I'm looking through it, looking for local beers. I was on vacation, and my mission was to drink local. I didn't want to drink anything more than 100 miles from where I was staying. Okay. And I brought stuff home from out of the area, like Norway. But uh, I didn't drink anything when I was in Virginia Beach that was from far away. I was talking with the owner and uh, talking about beer, having a good time. The guy knows his stuff about beer. He, he was a wine to beer conversion guy. Um, when he first opened his shop, he didn't want to carry beer in his wine shop. He didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And then he had a friend. He was lucky enough to have a friend who said, here, try some of these. And he loved it. And so he's kind of like a beer guy who just started off on the wrong foot. You know, he didn't know what was possible. I mean, you know, I, th I enjoy wine. You know, it's certainly I, I, very I, was, I meant starting off the wrong foot jokingly. Right? I see. Okay. So I'm talking, and you know, so after a while, I mentioned, you know, I do this podcast called Craft Beer Radio. He's like, I listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was pretty neat. That was the first time, I think, it definitely the first, if I qualify it properly, it's the first time I've walked into a store, talked to the owner out of the blue, and, and he's known me. So that was pretty cool. He didn't recognize you by your voice. No, no, he didn't. Which is, uh, well, he wasn't caught up on the shows. He was, he was several behind. I see. Sure. So, um, McKellar Beer Geek Breakfast, uh, one of the beers that he was able to get in, it's, it's distributed by the Shelton Brothers, and uh, brewed it in Yognio. I just like saying Yognio. <laughs> and uh, we like it. So don't, don't drink it too warm, though. Drink it yeah, at about 50, 50 degrees. You'll enjoy. Cheers. Cheers.